Foldables are getting boring. I hate to say that because the technology is so cool, but Samsung has failed you and you'll have to stick around until the end to find out why. Following the latest Samsung Fold and Flip launch, you sounded off in the comments about your disappointment with the Z Fold 4 and the Z Flip 4. And honestly, I can't really blame you. So are foldables over before they even got started? Well, you know, not if you look at the numbers. Back in 2015, analysts predicted that by 2024, half of all display shipments would be foldable. And surprisingly enough, that prediction seems to be holding true, with Samsung recently stating that it expects foldables to represent more than half of its top tier phone shipments by 2025. And you know, if you want to read all about those claims, be sure to check out the link below for the full article. The problem as I see it though right now is this. Walk down the street and tell me just how many flip or fold style phones that you see. There aren't really many overall, and you know what? It's still a niche category. So why do companies keep spending countless dollars developing devices which could either flip or they could flop? Well, it all comes down to race cars. Just stick with me here and it's gonna make a lot more sense. Even if you don't own one of these foldable devices yet, the reason that you should pay attention to foldables and even the minor updates is the same reason that I started watching Formula One racing way back in the day when I was a little kid. The technology that they put into these cars will eventually find its way into much cheaper and more readily accessible vehicles. Think about regenerative braking in uh, any of those EVs that you're seeing today. Traction control, ABS braking, experimenting with carbon fiber, dual overhead camshafts. Okay, I, I'm not gonna get too complicated, but all of those innovations had to start somewhere. And it's easy to think about foldables as F1 cars. They're both expensive, cutting edge, technological marvels. But the difference is that F1 is designed to be R&D as entertainment at high speeds, while the other is starting to slow down quite a bit. F1 remains exciting because it always represents the cutting edge of what's next for cars. But that's not the case for foldables though, which are more like one part of that. It's more like uh, ABS braking or traction control more than the entire F1 car itself. And if you want more concrete examples, it, you don't have to look much further than Samsung's Note series. The Note, like the foldable, was once a niche do-everything smartphone. It cost way too much, it had more features than most people would ever want, and it sold in relatively low numbers compared to the mainstream Galaxy S series devices. Then as regular consumers wanted more each and every year, you greedy buggers, the S series slowly caught up with the Note and the Note eventually became the mainstream. In fact, you know, even though Samsung no longer has the Note line, the S22 Ultra of today are arguably more Note than anything else. And the same will be true for the foldables. Right now, foldables as a technology are in the transition period between being an F1 origin story and becoming an average daily driver. They're still expensive, they appeal to a relatively small audience, and have features that are much more experimental. As foldable tech gets cheaper and cheaper, the fold will ultimately get more affordable, and the flip is going to move into that mid-range. So just like how your family car doesn't cost as much as a Maserati or a Lamborghini or any other kind of race car, uh, it still features a lot of the same tech. And you'll also see that with foldable tech of today, finding its way into a lot of the mainstream phones of tomorrow. Now, until that future comes, it's worth taking a look at what Samsung is trying to do with its foldables today. For starters, Samsung offered a crazy trade-in deal for the Flip 4, where you could upgrade from a Flip 3 for just a hundred bucks. I think the least talked about 
And most exciting part of all of this is in fact that Samsung has recently dropped the cost of the foldable screen repairs, which should give most consumers a lot more confidence, especially those first time foldable owners or really anybody looking to maybe make the switch. Now, before you say, Ryan, Samsung isn't as exciting as F1. Samsung's goal obviously isn't F1 style entertainment. It's mass market adoption. And because of that, that's where the money really is. But you know what, if that's boring, I guess that's okay. But there is a bigger question to be asked here. Why did they get so boring so fast? And I think it's because our attitudes towards tech have become very blase. And foldable phones arrived on the scene when our collective expectations were already so extremely high. So depending on where you stand and what your expectations were, of course Samsung has failed to grab the imagination of its customers with anything substantial or exciting. So in essence, yeah, they, they, they sort of did fail. But a leveling off or cooling off or boring launch or whatever you wanna call it, just means that foldables are getting a lot closer to becoming the next flagship. And when the day comes that Apple and Google finally make their own foldable phones, you can thank the perceived failures of Samsung, Motorola, Huawei, and Oppo for pioneering the race car that got us there. But you know what? That's just my take on things. If you agree with me or you disagree with me, leave a comment in the comment section down below. Until next time, guys, I'm one of the Ryans from Android Authority. Yes, there are many of us. Be kind, and we'll see you next time.